when you are supposed to be the expert in the situation. You don't really know the solution. Sometimes you have to play the part anyway. I'm Bruce Rule. I'm a writer and editor, and I help my clients with anything they need written. Social media, uh, press releases, reports, articles. I also help them with speeches, and uh, that's important because I also teach public speaking, both in workshops and with individual clients. And in fact, I wrote a book called Heartfelt Goodbye, How to Write and Deliver the Eulogy Your Loved One Deserves recently, and it's gotten a lot of good reviews. And I had an experience this week where I felt almost like coaching the person who was talking to me, which is uh, something that I, I have problems with at times because I'll be talking to somebody I can see what they're trying to do and I always go oh no you should say it this way or you should do this but I, obviously I don't interrupt them but in this case I had a doctor's appointment and uh, it was a little bit different medical situation and, and the doctor came in I had never seen him before and he, he was tall and sort of thin but out of shape you know, he had a little bit of the belly, he had sort of the flat, you know, no muscle to him. And he sort of came in and he sort of slumped in his chair like this. And he had these really garish sneakers on like you'd expect like a teenager to wear. He wasn't that young. He looked like he was in his 30s. But he had teenager sneakers on. And... Because it was an unusual situation, he couldn't just come out and say, do this. Instead, we were, we were talking about, well, you know, you could do that, you could do this. These are the options. But he didn't put it that way. Instead, he looked down at the floor and he was going, well, you know, sometimes we do this and, you know, sometimes we do that. And, you know, you know, um, I guess we could have do, do it this way, but we could have done it that way. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the guy going, am I supposed to trust you? You're like swiveling in your chair, looking around at everything but me, muttering, maybe you should do this and maybe I should do that. So I actually ended up taking control of the conversation. I was saying, so wait, so you're saying this is the option, this is the option. What, what should we do? What, what do you recommend we do? He said, well, uh, you know, we could do, the, we could do, the, I said, yeah, yeah I, I get that. Do you think it makes sense to go ahead and do this? And he said, oh, oh, oh okay. And uh, we agreed on what, I, what the procedure should be. And he said, oh, I'm going to go write up the instructions now. And he got up and he left. And he came back in, he was waving some loose papers. And he you know, slumped down his chair again. And then he went, ha, ha, ha. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you in on a little secret. See, when they first told me what your situation was, I, I wrote up, like, preliminary instructions, because, you know, and, uh, uh, well, these don't work anymore because, uh, you know, there's a, there's a uniqueness to your situation, so I've got to go and update these, and I'll print these off. I'll, I'll be back in a minute. And he got up and walked out again. I thought to myself, you're doing everything possible to make me think, you don't know what you're doing. Obviously, I wasn't going to coach the kid. But there were a couple of things that he could have done in this situation that would have helped both him and me reach a consensus on what needed to be done and because I wanted him to take charge because he's the doctor and I'm not. First of all, it sounds silly, and it sounds like I'm giving an old man advice. But the fact is, you don't look that professional when you're wearing garish sneakers. So if I were him, I would wear old man sneakers, you know, nice, good shoes. Not sneakers, but shoes. Right? I would come into the room, and if I wanted to sit to make it more intimate, I would sit up straight. You know, not slump. But sit up straight, just like your mother always told you to do, right? <laughs> or stand. 
if you're if you're small you could stand and talk because that's uh, again projecting authority right he could have instead of having some loose paperwork if he keeps it clipped to a, a clipboard this looks better well let me tell you you've got this option this option instead of you've got this option and this option you see these are small things that can be done. Now, obviously, he has to work on his filler words. He had a lot of filler words. And he has to work on his eye contact. He should be looking straight at the patient when he's talking about the options. Just because I want him to pretend to be an authority doesn't mean he can't admit that he doesn't know the best thing to do. If he had sat down, looked me straight in the eye and said, look, this is a little bit of a unique situation. We could do A, we could do B, we could do C. Here's what we usually do, but in this case, maybe we should do this, or maybe we should do that. Here are the costs and benefits of each one. That would have been fine. A patient would be happy with that. But when you're looking at the floor and you're going, oh, I don't know, you know, it doesn't work. It's not good for you as the authority. And believe me, sometimes an audience wants you to be the authority, even if you're not 100% sure what you could do. Or should do at least project that you're confident enough to know that these are the options i wasn't even sure that he was right about the options because he of his demeanor now there was one thing that he does do correctly and i want to bring this up and it's a little bit on the sexist side but i'm going to bring it up anyway he was a, he was a young man with a very weak chin and i noticed on his name badge that he wore a beard usually. And I said, oh, you usually wear a beard, don't you? He said, yes, I usually wear a beard, but I had to shave it off for this event this week. I'm going to grow it back. And I said, good. <laughs> because the fact of the matter is, if you're a man, having a nice trimmed beard instead of a weak chin is considered more masculine by most people, and it, it lends an air of authority, or certainly it lends an air of age and wisdom a little bit. You know, so I, I, I was glad that he was going to grow back the beard. But if I were his, if he were my client, I would be telling him, look, you need to work on your filler words. You need to work on your eye contact. And, and right now, I want you to put on regular shoes. I want you to stand up when you're talking to patients if, if rather than slump in your chair. Or at least if you got to sit because you think that's better familiarity, fine, sit. But sit up straight when you're talking to them. Don't slouch. <laughs> you know, because it's what the patient wants. And I think that's what all patients want, to be honest with you. So sometimes, even if you're not confident, you got to play the role. And I really believe that's true. I, I don't know. What do you think? I'd, I'd be curious what you believe should be done when you're not 100% confident. Should you still project confidence when you're talking about the options, or should you not? Please comment down below. Like and share this video because I think it's important for other people. Please subscribe so uh, you, you find out whenever I post a, a new video. And uh, until next week, take care.